Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday morning. Oh, no, it's afternoon already. <laughs> yeah, I had to spend a little time with the family. So we had a little brunch with eggs because it's Easter. It was a lot of fun. Now, this is the uh, preparation for uh, a record pour on the spinner. And uh, what I do, because a lot of people complain that the uh, labels come through I haven't had that before but you know just to be on the safe side I like to put uh, gesso on the uh, on the label so that's what I'm doing right now and first I'm starting off with a uh, pretty thin layer on both and I will be sticking videos together because um, I have to let this dry and then do the next layer and the next and the next. So uh, I'm going to take you through the whole process of uh, how I do a, a record pour and I will give you um, in-depth information about how I do it and on what I do it and all that kind of stuff. So first off, this is it. I guess so my labels just to make sure that they don't bleed through the pour when I pour on top of it. So we'll let these dry and I'll be right back. Okay, they're pretty much dry uh, right now. So we're going to add the uh, second layer. And I do three because, um, well, that's when I don't see uh, the label through the gesso. So we do another one like this. And as you can see, the hole is filling up with gesso, but I don't mind because you can take that out later. So this one is nice and smooth. Now this one, nice and smooth. And a lot of people are um, told me that they see the label when they've poured the paint on, they see the label coming through, you know, the definition of it. Well, that's usually when the paint is uh, way too thin. You will see that. But what you can also do is put a little gesso on your um, on your brush. Let's see. It's half empty. Like that. And then just push up against the label. You can do that if you know what I mean. You know, you load up your brush and just pull it up against the label. That way you'll have a little bit of a... Um, um, sort of a buffer before you go down and you can do that a couple of times this one doesn't, doesn't need it this one the label is a little bit thicker and you will experience that also when you start pouring records you'll see that some labels have a, a, a little bit of a rise on on the edge but others they won't and let's see. See how smooth it is now? Just by loading up the brush and brushing up against the rim, it'll uh, flatten out. Okay, now we're going to let this one dry again, and I will be right back. Okay, that was the, the second layer, and we've uh, let it dry, and we're going to come back in with a one more but this is going to be a real smooth one as smooth as you can make it so that's pretty much covered as you can see here i can still see a little bit of the uh, label so i'm going to put on a just a tiny bit thicker layer So that's done too. And of course, another little push up against that rim so we don't see that later when we pour the, uh, pour the record. That's it. Now this, you don't have to guess all because the uh, acrylic paint will stick to it. As long as it is clean and doesn't have the fingerprints, that's why usually I always put on gloves. I'm so used to it. Every time I, I do a video, even before I start, I put on gloves because 
when you're touching your own uh, art pieces, you don't want your fingerprints on it. It always leaves an oily print. And before you know it, you're varnishing something. And all of a sudden, you know, you got a little fatty thing on there and your varnish separates or something like that. So be on the safe side, put on gloves, always better. Or keep everything really clean. Okay, so we're going to let this one dry again. And then we're going to do the back with the uh, liquid tape. And this is it. It's from Walter Strong. And he makes it. And we're going to be doing a discount code. So there will be a link under the video uh, going to the keyword, um, keyword Excel sheet. And I'll tell you what that is. Uh, Brenda makes the, the, the keywords for me. So every time I post a video, she'll get some keywords, put that in the list. So if you're looking for me making jewelry or, or me cleaning a canvas or varnishing or whatever you want to know, if you go to the, um, the keyword list, it will give you the exact video that you're looking for. So it's really easy. And it's underneath all my videos. If you go to uh, more information, you'll see a link to that um, Excel sheet. It'll make your life much easier. Really, I promise. Lots of goodies in there. So um, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll flip them over because this is the, the side we're going to be pouring on. But I want to use the liquid tape to keep the uh, back uh, pretty clean because the thing is that when you get your um, This I'll have to take off first, but this is easy to take off um, But you know, I like to have the uh, the back of the uh, painting pretty much clean and If you get your fingerprints on here in these, you know where the music is You'll never get it out because it's going to go in between there in the grooves and you won't get it out So that's why I'm going to be using the liquid tape stuff so let's let this dry and I'm going to clean up a little here and then do the liquid tape. So see you back in a second or two. Okay, we're back. Um, this is uh, the back of the, uh, the record. We have the gesso on the front and now we're going to use the uh, liquid tape to give this a nice little cover and what I like to do is like this pull it over the side make sure it's all covered that you don't have these uh, black spots in it but this will be enough to um, to seal it and make sure that all the drips we can pull that off later so as you can see really easy to um, Put it on with a brush and like I said there's a um, link under the video to a keyword Excel sheet and you can find your coupon code there and um, oops gotta get it off the front um, Walter Strong has a shop on uh, Amazon so it's easy to find and using the coupon code, you'll get a nice little discount. Now, as you can see, it's a no-brainer. You just put it on like this. Just pulling it over the edge so that you don't have any on the front, only on the back. Because everywhere this is, will be, this is going to turn into a sort of a silicone, plasticky, sort of thing and you can pull that right off but you don't want it on the front because then you'll have a little problem because then it might release and then your painting is ruined so don't do that here we go almost ready so I do want to keep this a little bit on the short side so I'm thinking maybe I'll do the other one offline but you get the idea and you couldn't do the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure I won't be touching this. I'll only be touching this with my hands. And because there will be paint on my hands, this is the only bit that I'll be, uh, you know, 
contaminating with paint so I'm pretty um, I'm pretty sure this will do it so I'm gonna put this one away and do the other one and as you could see you know it only takes a couple of minutes to uh, build that up and uh, put it on the uh, on the side and um, the liquid masking tape comes in these little uh, little tin cans and the thing is um, one of these will go a long way you will have um, a lot of uh, canvases you could put it on the back of your canvas or anything else you're going to do a pour on and it goes a long way it really does There's a lot in one of those little jars, little tins. As you can see how fast it goes, it's really, uh, all the waiting is for the stuff to dry. That's the only thing you have to wait for. So let's put some more on here. It's kind of fun to do too. It's really uh, zen, zen-y, because it's so, it's like paste, and it smooths out really well. So, um, I don't think anyone will have a problem with putting this on. And I'll show you how I take it off once we've poured and everything's dry. You might want to do the, uh, the rim a little bit thicker so that you can really pull it off. But I'm confident, because I've tried this before, and I'm pretty confident that this will uh, work, you know, pulling it off. Because um, even that, you know, taking this off is really zen-like, too. Because it's, I don't know, but I get that feeling when when I do that. You know, it's it's just fun to take off. It's like someone has been in the sun too long and has all the blisters on the back, and you pull that, pull that off. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, but that's what it reminds me of. Okay. Well, we're going to put this one away too, and we're going to let this dry, and then I'll be back, and I'll set up my uh, turning uh, banding wheel, turning table, and I'll tell you how I center it, and I'll tell you how I put this thing on there. I'll tell you everything. So uh, be back in about two seconds. Okay, we're all set up. We're ready. Now, uh, as you can see, this is the um, the liquid masking tape and as you can see it turned darker and that's a sign that it's uh, dry uh, I'll show you one more time what it looks like this is what it looks like and again under the video you'll find the uh, the Excel sheet with the keywords and a discount code to buy this the discount code is um, only for as long as it's uh, as it lasts, because they they're not prepared to have like huge thousands and thousands of uh, uh, these sold. So um, get it while it's uh, still available, and you can use the discount code. Now this is ready. So this is the back. This is the front, which we gessoed. So all I do is take a real cheap gesso. This oops. This one is um, from the Action in uh, Holland. It's a dollar store, very cheap, and it'll do the trick. No uh, problems with that. Now, next thing I want to discuss is the banding wheel. And um, the banding wheel, as you can see, it's really heavy, and it has ball bearings in it, and it's used to put some sort of a clay thing on. And then you can just go along, you know, when you want to glaze it and make straight lines or something like that. Or you can use it when you're doing clay and you're making something and you can turn it around. But you'll find it in shops where they sell things that are used for clay. Now, the center is about here. Let's see. Me, A little bit more here. That's about the center. Yep, that looks better. Now, I put that on because I think it's easier to stick the uh, record, you know, if I make sure that I'm in the middle there, 
and you know because I'm doing this uh, now on video normally I would measure this out and have it exactly in the middle now the next thing I do is I take uh, this sticky tape and with the sticky side out I put it like that in the middle now I've got my gloves I'll have to do this without gloves I'm sorry but it sticks to your gloves like crazy okay let's do this again so I take a piece of sticky tape and I turn it inside out have to put it in the middle like that And to make sure I'll do another one, like that. And now we have a sticky surface to put that thing on. Now, uh, new gloves. Now, when, you ha when you've done that, you're pretty sure that, you know, it won't just fly off that thing because uh, you don't want it flying all over the place. But another thing you don't want is uh, paint flying all over the place. So what I did is got one of these. This is just a laundry basket. As you can see, laundry basket. And I cut it just a little bit higher than my banding wheel is. And even here on the inside, it says four US gallons. And here, UK gallons. So maybe you can buy one in the country where you are. So that's that, center it. Okay, so there it is, all ready. So we're gonna stick our, we're gonna go look straight through it. We're gonna go look for the uh, little cross. There it is. We're gonna stick that on. And it's pretty much centered. This is as good as it gets. This is okay. So press it down and do a couple of test runs. That'll work. Now, I have my paint mixed up and I know everyone asks me about the colors, but the thing is, I almost don't use pure color. So what I do is I mix my own. The only pure color is this one, that's burnt sienna because it is so rusty orange looking. But uh, these colors, this is Naples yellow, and I'm talking Windsor Newton here. This is Naples yellow with titanium in it because Naples yellow is usually even darker than this one. So I put some uh, titanium white. This is turquoise, and I make it by uh, mixing phthalo blue and green and titanium white. Now, if you want the, uh, the turquoise to be more on the blue side, you put in more phthalo blue. And if you want it to be more on the green side, like this one, you put in more phthalo green. And it's really a no-brainer because no matter what you mix, it's pretty. It's a really pretty color. So then I have my Van Dyke Brown, which I also mix because this is real chocolatey, warm brown. And Van Dyke Brown is more on the cool side. It's the cold brown. And what I do is I put anything that I can grab, like uh, red, orange, yellow, it works. Then this time I'm going to add, this is powder blue, but because I thought it was a little bit too powdery, I put in some cerulean blue. Let me get it. So this was the uh, normal color, but I found that a little bit too powdery blue, so I added a little bit of this. Oh no, it's called Process Cyan. Okay. So now we've got everything set up. We're ready to pour. We know it, it works. 
and we're going to do a dirty cup I'm gonna pour it on top and we'll see what we get I've put in dimethicone and I've put in a little bit of spray silicone and this is a new silicone that I'm trying out you know when you're doing stuff like this I don't know how it works uh, with you out there but when I'm in a shop my eyes are always looking out for anything you know that I can use to pour <laughs> so so when I saw that new silicon spray I thought let me take that and test it so I've got dimethicone and one spray of silicon spray in every color okay so now we've got our cup and I'd like to start with a little bit of the light color because I always do don't know why just do then I'm gonna put in a lot of that burnt sienna because I think that really lightens up everything makes it just that little bit more interesting a little bit of that turquoise then the lighter the blue turquoise and of course that little bit of powder blue just a little bit not too much and I'm gonna come back in with the Naples yellow and let's put some of this really slightly on the top see that if you put it on the top you want to do it close to the cup if you want it to go straight through you pour from a height so this is it I'm going to really make it spin. That was quick, right? <laughs> that was really quick. Okay, let's see. So I'm torching the whole thing. I think I did get everything, maybe a little there. Now the thing that you you maybe some would like to do is, uh, you know, spin it again so that it'll it's going to move a little bit more. But I don't think I would do that because, um, well, I just wouldn't. But seeing it right now I'm not too happy with it I don't think it's really spectacular it does have a beautiful light band going down there a lot of uh, cells but I'd like it to be just a little bit more interesting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a ribbon on top of it so first making sure I got everything out of my cup that's that and I would like, I think I'd like a, a really light band going over it. So here we go. Just one like that. And there's just one thing you can't give it the speed you really want. Well, that was a pretty good swing. Let's see what happens. Now that is beautiful. I like that. Look how that goes through there. But I am going to torch it because I'm pretty sure it's gonna give me something. Now you can't see it, but it is covered in little uh, little cells. But now I really like that, and I think I'd like another one. A 
Let's see what this one does. Yeah, this really brings it a little bit more of a depth that I really like. That is pretty. Now, this is the difficult part where you take it off the, uh, the banding wheel. And I do want to move it a little bit to give it just that little bit more interesting look. But that's it. Let me get you in close. There it is. Okay, we're going to let this one dry. And as you can see, the sticky tape is still on there, but I would take it off and uh, put on a new one for the next pour. Uh, this, one, uh, this one is it. I'm going to do the um, taking off the liquid mask in another video because this has to uh, dry for at least two, three days. So I won't be able to do that today, but I do want to get the video out. So um, thanks all for watching. Love you all to pieces. Liebe euch alle. And uh, I'll be back because I've got a lot of paint left over and we're going to do some fun stuff with it. So see you in a bit.